grace of Christ. Let us go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city cry out against it, for the weakness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind of the sea. There was a mighty tempest of the sea. So the ship was about to be broken up. The mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us, so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots. Thou fell in Jonah. And then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Uh, where do you come from? What is your country? Or what people are you? So he said to them, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the men were exceedingly afraid, and they said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. What shall we do to you that the sea may come for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. The sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continue to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please don't let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And then Amen. A special person in the old in the Old Testament who is a special chosen person of God who loves God. God has chosen him. And the power of the Holy Spirit that he came to a point. He came to a, to a dead end when he, you know, of his obedience to God because he wasn't obedient. And it's a shocking thing when a person becomes to you know, a dead end because of, or get becomes deadlocked because of his lack of obedience. And then he, can't even, he cannot even turn to obedience again. So Jonah was a blessed man of God. In a in a period of falling away from God, 
So the enemies, especially the Assyrians, and the danger was of the people of Israel, was terrible and because of the Assyrians came and attacked and destroyed Israel completely so in this affliction of Israel God was with Jonah Jeroboam was a king and he used them for the freedom of Israel but all of a sudden he told me things that he couldn't understand that Jonah never understood he never understood the commandment was simple <coughs> go to Nineveh go and preach to them and in 40 days I'm gonna destroy Nineveh in 40 days unless well unless they repent but Jonah knows God he knows that he's all merciful long-suffering with lots of mercy relenting of the evil he's about to bring if the person believes with works of faith humbling works and he hopes in salvation of the Lord I repeat Jonah knows God merciful long-suffering and he relents of the evil he's about to bring when a person believes and God works of faith he believes and has works of humility knowing that he knows the characteristics of God Jonah cannot stand that commandment to go and preach he cannot stand for him to preach in case they repent because if they believe the word God is not going to destroy Nineveh he's saying again God is not going to destroy Nineveh but this is what God wants to save them Now this is a here we a witness a, a unique decision of a person of God that he separates himself from the will of God. I do not agree. He decides I can may even say that he tries, even though it's too much, to say that he commits suicide, spiritual suicide from his relationship in God. He prefers not to obey the word of the Lord because he doesn't understand how God operates and his nature and character. He thinks God is God only of Israel. because he foresees a chance that the Ninevites may believe the word of the Lord and with the grace of the Lord has given to Jonah he he is negatively hopeful that his message that he's going to bring the Ninevites will bring dreadful consequences from his perspective which is for them to relent to repent and God to relent from the evil he's about to bring but in our lives it doesn't happen what we want especially especially if you're a man of God 
God said in his loving kindness, God said in his strictness, the ones here that he has called, the ones he has called, in the end, he is going to glorify them. This is either in good or evil, what's going to happen is what God wants them. This is not simple. You know, God will bring the results that He wants to, whether with good, um, uh, by obeying in, in His, uh, by obeying and submitting His goodness, or by bringing His discipline. And discipline is going to be painful. He's going to bring though to the point where you're going to obey, whether you're ready or not. So as he now Jonah released himself from the work of God, from the presence of God, he decided to go to Tharsis. Now in Tharsis was away from the will of God, and God had a different will for Jonah. And because Jonah is a unique man of God, he is the only one who is able to perform the will of God. And it's a dreadful thing for, for a person of God to draw away from the will of God in his life and not do it. And and as he distanced himself away from <coughs> away from um, now as the tempest came while they were traveling by uh, by sea behind this dreadful tempest that came upon them was hiding the love of God behind them. Now Jonah didn't care. Perhaps he said we're all going to drown. So he went um, deep into the ship and went to, to sleep. Now the captain of the sea found him he said, what are you doing here, sleeper? Come and pray to your gods too, in case he spares us and we don't, we don't drown. It's, it's very important in order to understand for who, for whom we are suffering consequences against the will of God, and. Because Jonah here abandoned the place and the um, and the will of God in his life, the cast lots. <coughs> I am a Hebrew. We all gonna drown. And Jonah knows the solution of things and he says if you throw me the sea then the calm is going to come and they were rowing so they prayed the Lord let his And then pray to the God and say, we pray, O Lord, please let us perish with this man's life and don't charge us with innocent blood. And then they praise God. And now the work of God starts from this point on because as soon as they threw Jonah the sea, the sea became calm and then a great fish swallowed Jonah. 
and God continued his work with Jonah as he preached for in 40 days yet he's going to destroy Nineveh unless they repent and what impresses me here is that Jonah uh, preached for just one day and he went went around Nineveh uh, on the city of on the first day's walk and he destroyed on said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown and I repeat now the message of Jonah is effective because he is an emissary of God he didn't go on his own initiative in fact God forced him and then amazing things happen everybody repented they even declared a three-day fast and as they did works of repentance and faith and returning all all of them together even the animals were put to fast with a hope that perhaps the Lord would spare us God relent of the evil he was about to do. Now starts the personal problem of Nineveh. And now Jonah is understand God. Something is difficult to understand. We don't understand how infinitely great is the love of God. He doesn't love just you. He loves also the, your enemies and the Assyrians. He loves them with internal love. He doesn't have this love in the Old Testament. And he became indignant with God. Is it good to be indignant? And indeed, he ordered then as uh, God ordered the uh, um, uh, uh, God first of all he grew a giant tree to give him shade to uh, to Jonah uh, Jonah felt relief during the, uh, the the midst of the heat waves as he was observing from a high point uh, Nineveh to unfold the plan of God but then God had a warm order to go ahead and dry the giant tree that grown on top of um, uh, Jonah and then finally Jonah from his relief turned to indignancy again and God is still trying to teach him and tell him that um, he's trying to tell him to and teach him about his mercy and he became indignant here Jonah against his father like in the case of the gospel, there was the new t of the gospel, the prodigal son, who wasted his inheritance, and <laughs> even though he did that, though eventually he returned, and he said he decided to do works of repentance, and the father loves the prodigal son, dear brethren. Let us always be in agreement with the love of God the Father. But humanly speaking, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. Let us watch out. 
the mission that God has given me. Just the Lord shown grace and mercy. And what will we see? God has. release some people to be to be under our spiritual uh, mission for you us to proclaim the work and the words of God and this is going to have a fruit this work is going to have fruit that's going to be beneficial for us as well and we need to understand what the love of God the Father is and not only that and let us dr draw near to God to flood our hearts with His love in order to be able to love all those that God loves knowing God does not want the, uh, the death of the sinner Two things are very serious here. And the case of the, of, of the story, the parable of the prodigal son, the elder son did not understand the love of God the Father and the abandoned and joy of the Lord. Instead of rejoicing the love of God the Father, Instead of the elder son, he became indignant. He, he became wrathful. And, and Jonah left, and the elder brother, in the case of the, on the parable of the prodigal son, fell away from the will of God. We don't know what happened to them in both cases if they came back to the love of God. May God preserve us. You know what that means. Do you know what your continuance is? It is expedient to understand what our continuance, how it's going to unfold and turn out for us. We may be destroyed because we don't understand the word of God. Our continuance may be a great blessing because we understand the will of God. And all these things are a result of our heart. With all care, watch out the issues that jump out of your heart because you're in danger, Jonah. With great care, elder son, in the house of your father, you're working. Preserve your heart because you're in danger. And the danger is great. And is unrectifiable unless you draw near to God to explain to you the how and the why and the when and not only those unless God floods your heart with his love and you are observing your heart so you can listen this you cannot hang out with this person or that person or you cannot stand in front of this person and there uh, why because 
your heart is not compatible with, with God's love in order to make decisions according to the will of God. And the decisions of Jonah in this case, or the other son, they're not only risky and, and perilous and dreadful for either Jonah or the other son. In contrast with the Ninevites, that God blessed them and the younger son whom God the Father blessed. Dear brother, how important it is <coughs> for any one of us his continuance. It's important to know what is your continuance. And of our dear people and environment. So our message. So our message should be a message of salvation. May God show mercy. Preserve our hearts. When our heart may get spoiled with one person, with Jonah, spoiled with one, <coughs> um, if our heart gets in the wrong place, just one person, our tempest of experience is a tempest of despair. Today, God, I may dare to say, He's prophesying to us, I may say with conviction, He's revealing, if your and my tumor is a blessed, is a blessing or a curse, if merciful if you are merciful and you are re re or you repent of evil then you become an imitator of God but if you are absolute in your views and opinions and say it is his fault listen there is no ch chance for God to bless him. Why is God blessing that person? Then evil is near you. This is a prophetic word. And every one of us. From your heart. of your heart depends your tomorrow. If it's going to be the blessing of God or the curse of God. May God preserve us. Amen.